to tell you, Lord, I love you. Somebody ought to give God praise if you love him. You ought to just tell God, thank you right where you are. We are blessed of God to be here on tonight again. We welcome you to WOW service on tonight, worship on Wednesday. Listen, go ahead, tell everybody again to tune in to the Cherry Grove Gift Ministries broadcast. I salute and thank God for all of our members that are watching, and especially we thank God for our music ministry on tonight. We bless the name of our God for all of our musicians, our praise and worship leader, our praise team. Listen, th those of you that are watching, that know them personally, send them a, a God bless you by messenger or on Facebook or text uh, that you, if you have their number, let them know how much of a blessing they are being to you through our Facebook live ministry, our gift broadcast ministry. I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Their sacrifices that they have been making since day one. Amen. Ever since they've been here and our praise team before the COVID-19 and even during this time, all their faithfulness uh, through the years. We salute and thank God for each and every one of them. Amen. Galatians chapter 6. Amen. Galatians chapter 6. I want to try to live one verse tonight. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 1. The word of the Lord, it says, Brethren, if any man be overtaken in the fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Thank you so very much. I want to preach tonight about cover me. Cover me. Uh, Fred Hammond uh, came out with that song some years ago entitled Cover Me. Beloved, no one in this world is perfect. I'm going to press my wine and try it one more time. No one in this world is perfect. Third time is a charm. No one in the world is perfect. To be honest, beloved, all of us, including myself, from the pulpit to the parishioners that occupy in the pews, all of us have some sins, some shortcomings, and some struggles we wrestle with in our lives. All of us, beloved, got something that we're dealing with. Matter of fact, beloved, Paul, he says it this way in Romans 3, 23, Paul said, all have sinned, not y'all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. In other words, beloved, it's something wrong with all of us. But here's the shout of the story, yet our Savior has given us the solution in a simple situation. The Savior says, although you got sin, you got shortcomings, you got struggles you're dealing with, but I got a solution that's simple. His solution is God has given each of us, each of us. Let me try it one more time. God has given each of us, each of us. In other words, child of God, here's your praise point and your shout stop tonight. God will put somebody in your life that will help you go through what you're going through because they've already gone through it. I wish I had some help right there. Beloved, it's called cover me. God will put somebody in your life that will help you handle what you're dealing with because they've already had to handle
handle what you're dealing with. The God that we serve has given each of us, each of us, that's the reason, child of God, particularly during this racist time, this season, this world, this time in which we live, if we only realize that God has given each of us to us, our world will be a better place. Do I have a witness here? If we realize that nobody is no better than nobody. Black ain't no better than white. Whites are no better than black. The Republican no better than the Democrat. Democrat no better than the Republican. All of us stand in need of the same grace, the same mercy, and the same love of God. Paul said it's called cover me. Cover me simply means this. Help me with what I can't help me. <laughs> I wish somebody could help me right there. In other words, cover me says help me with what I cannot help me. How many of you know all of us need somebody to cover us? Matter of fact, beloved, before you point another finger at somebody else, remember, child of God, when you point one finger at me, you got three fingers pointing right back at you. That means, beloved, that you are three times worse than the one person that you're pointing at. Everybody need to be covered. Now, here's how we cover one another. Cover no, no, one another, number one, by hiding my handicap. Number two, healing my hurts. Number three, help me handle my heavy load. Stick both hands out. I'm gonna throw it again. I don't want to be. I don't want it to be an incomplete pass. Here's how we cover one another. Number one, hide my handicap. How many of you know that's watching, beloved? All of us got some handicaps. In the game of golf, when you play golf, they have what's called a handicap. It means that you have some deficiencies in your game, but the game has built into it some help to help you play the game. In other words, God says that if golf can do that, what do you think I can do for my children? Here's your shout, child of God. God says all of y'all got some handicaps but since I am the leader of the game of life I've built into your life some help that will help you along the way do I have a witness here that's why prayer is so powerful that's why the word is so powerful that's why your church is so powerful that's why other Christians are so powerful in our lives it's because God has built into us us some help that will help us along the way. You got to learn how to help hide other folks handicap. In other words, cover one another. All of us beloved got something in our lives that we don't want nobody to know about. And you can give God praise for those family members. Talk to me somebody. Those friends that God have placed in your life that know the real you but they won't expose you. Let me try it again. They know the real you, but they won't expose you. It's called cover me. They know you sometimes got a nasty attitude. They know sometimes you got bad behavior. They know sometimes you got cantankerous character. They know sometimes you got a devilish demeanor, but they love you enough to help you hide your handicap. You remember it was Peter? When Jesus got arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane, any Bible readers watching out there? And when Jesus got arrested, you know what Peter did. He pulled out his switchblade and he cut the soldier's ear off. Now, people got kind of uh, upset. They said, Whoo, I didn't know Peter was like that, but Jesus did. <laughs> In other words, all of his ministry, Jesus hid his handicap because he knew how Peter really was. He is your shout, child of God. The reason you are where you are, got what you got, doing what you're doing, and been where you've been is because the Lord has hid your handicap. If people knew how we really were, we wouldn't have what we have right now. You ought to lift your hand and open your mouth right where you are and give God praise that God 
will cover me because he hide my handicap. But then hide my handicap, cover me, but then you got to help me with my hurts. When we cover one another, you have to do what's called help heal somebody hurts. Come here, Mary and Martha. You remember when their brother, Jesus' friend Lazarus, got sick and he died. And the scripture said Jesus shows up some four days later after he's dead. When Jesus get there, you know the story, Mary and Martha needed healing for their hurt. Watch what Jesus did. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. He said, I am the life. Though he may be dead, but since I'm here, he's going to have to start living all over again. And Jesus had so much power that he speaks to the grave and a dead man, he calls Lazarus by name and he got so much power that a dead man had to stop being dead and had to start being alive all over again. It's called cover me. You ought to thank God that you serve a God that covers you by healing your hurts. Somebody watching me right now, you're dealing with some hurts right now. Our country is dealing with hurts right now. The Floyd family is dealing with hurts right now. Even the police are dealing with hurts right now. Our government is dealing with hurts right now. But if we turn to Jesus... Somebody ought to testify. He will heal your hurts. It's called cover me. Cover me by hiding my handicap. Cover me by healing my hurts. But watch this. Cover me by helping me handle my heavy load. Somebody watching, you're dealing with a heavy load. We got members in our church going through seasons of death right now. Your pastor know that your heart is heavy, but I want to encourage you, member, child of God, that's watching God is going to help you handle your heavy load. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? One, one day a squirrel and an ant had a conversation. The squirrel noticed that the ant uh, was living in a big ant bed. And the squirrel said, "Woo! I wish I could have a house that was well built like yours. The ant says to the squirrel, he says, what you don't understand is the Lord, he helped me to handle my heavy load. <laughs> the squirrel said, how is that? He said, what I had to do is I had to help somebody else handle their heavy load. <laughs> and when it came for me to handle my heavy load, God returned the favor. <laughs> I wish somebody could catch that with both hands. Yeah, beloved, God is speaking to somebody that the Lord, he will help you handle your heavy load, but you got to help somebody else handle their heavy load. When others are down, reach down and help pull them back up. When others are hurt, help heal their hurts. When others don't have money, help pay for them. When others are going through a storm, you be the one to help pull them out. Is there any anybody watching that can tell God thank you he will help you handle your heavy load the heaven witness is called cover me that's what Paul is saying in this one little verse Paul says in this one little verse brethren if any man be overtaken in a fault you that are spiritual Here's what you do. Restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, because you can be tempted. Can I tell you, beloved, why this is a rhema word from the Lord for such a time as this? That if we would develop a spirit of covering one another, our world would be a better place. America would be a better place. Our community would be a better place. Jackson, Mississippi would be a better place. Can I tell you, your marriage would be a better place. Your home would be a better place. Your job would be a better place if we develop a spirit to cover one another. Can I tell you why we ought to cover one another? It's because I'm not perfect. Let me try it again. We ought to cover one another because we are not perfect. Paul says this, brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, 
you which are spiritual, restore him in the spirit of meekness and consider yourself lest you be tempted. Here's the text, y'all. Paul is writing this letter to the Galatians. The Galatians uh, were those during this time were believers in God who had recently been converted over to Christ. And as they're growing in their faith with God, the devil, he got to show up. Let me park there real quick before I run out of time and encourage somebody, child of God, don't get bent out of shape if the devil show up while you trying to live for the Lord. Matter of fact, if you catching hell right now, tell God, thank you. It means you're on the right track. Talk to me if you can. How many of you know if the devil not bothering you, it's because the devil, he already got you. He only bothers folks that's following after the Lord. Paul says to the Galatians, I got to encourage y'all. They're growing in their faith and now here come some religious leaders that says, listen, you can't just be saved by faith through grace alone. The religious leaders said, you got to obey the law in order to really be saved. So now Paul, like a good pastor, he has to sit down and reteach his members over and over about their freedom in Christ. That we are not saved by the law, we are saved by love. Talk to me somebody. God want a relationship, not rules and regulations. One of the black eyes of the church today is the world think in order to be a Christian, you got to follow the law. But the Bible teaches us we don't have to follow the law. We follow God's love. And when you got God's love, you don't mind following the law. Talk to me somebody. God said, I want a relationship, not rules and regulation. Because somebody watching me can testify when you have a relationship with Jesus, you don't mind following the rules and regulations by Jesus. Can I tell you, here's the challenge of our times right now. We live in a world, watch this, this go bless you, where we have a government trying to enforce the law without love. And they don't realize that they are fighting against a citizenry that's want, that wants love from the law. <laughs> Come on, talk to me somebody. I say it again. Our government is, is working to fulfill the law, but without love. And they are fighting against their own citizens who are looking for love from the law. In other words, beloved, Paul said, when you got love in your heart, you will treat folk how you want to be treated. <laughs> when you got the love of God in your heart, you will see people like God see people. Talk to me, somebody. When you got the love of God in your heart, as a black man, I can't say I hate white folk. If you white, you can't say I hate black folk. The Bible said, how can and you love God who you never seen but hate your brother and your sister that you see every day. The scripture said you are a liar. Thank God for the spirit of covering. God said cover me. Paul said I see the love but I see the lesson. Watch this. Here it is. Here's the love, y'all. Watch Paul's language. This go bless you. Paul said the first word, brethren. <laughs> Stop right there. Brethren, Adelphos, A D E L P H O S, Alpha Delta, uh, Ada Lambda, Pi, Omicron, Sigma, Adelphos. It means this from the same bloodline. In other words, Paul said, even though we may not have had the same mama and daddy, but if you're saved, you got the same heavenly father. <laughs> Ought to have some help. That's the problem with America and our society. America hadn't figured out that if you say you're a Christian, all of us, no matter our color, we got the same daddy. 
Do I have some help that's watching today? Paul said, watch this, brethren. In other words, Paul said, watch this, I'm not excluded from the conversation. Paul said, matter of fact, God has arrested my spirit. I'm in it 100%. He said, brethren. In other words, Paul is not pointing a finger at you. Paul is really saying God is pointing a finger at me too. Paul said, brethren. In other words, all of us got some sins. Talk to me somebody. Got some short Cummings, all of us got some struggles that we all have to deal with. Shame on somebody pointing a finger at somebody else because they got a different color and you think that you better. Shame on somebody because you have a different political view. Now you're so sanctified and holy and mighty that you think you're better than somebody else. Child of God, don't you realize by now, all of us got something wrong with all of us. If it had not been for the grace of God, would none of us be alive right now? Paul said, this is not a your problem, this is a we problem. That's what the protesters, that's what the rioters are saying through their actions. They're saying it's not a black problem, it's a human problem. <laughs> it's not a white problem, it's a human problem as a human being. If you know the Lord, you ought to love one another. Paul said, brethren. He said, matter of fact, I can look back over my life. I got to stop, but let me share this with you. He said, as I look back over my life, he said, the reason why I'm passionate about us covering one another, Paul said, it's because that's what the Lord had to do for me. Paul said, check my record and my resume. You know, I wasn't saved all of my life. <laughs> I wish I had some help here. How many of you know, you ain't been saved all of your life. You hadn't been in church all of your life. You hadn't said your prayer before you go to bed all of your life. You hadn't said your grace before you ate something to eat all of your life. Beloved, you ought to thank God the Lord didn't kill us before we ever got saved. Paul said, I know where I come from. He said, I ain't been saved all of my life. Matter of fact, everybody know my story. In Acts chapter 9, he said, I was on my way to persecute the Christians. Matter of fact, I was good at it. I beat them up. I put them in prison. Come on, Bible readers. I, I stood by the side and consented to the death of Deacon Stephen, just like those other four police officers that stood by the side and watched George Floyd die. Do a heaven witness here. Paul said, I ain't been saved all of my life but Jesus. How many of you know, beloved, that's our testimony, but Jesus. When, when I was on my way to hell, but Jesus. When I wasn't fit to live, too scared to die, but Jesus. When I didn't know no better, but Je it was the Lord that saved me. And Paul said, if the Lord have saved you, Take your nose out the air and humble yourself and go and try to help save somebody else. If the Lord forgiven you, we ought to forgive somebody else. If the Lord has given us another chance, you ought to give somebody else another chance. I'm talking to some husband, some marriage. Quit being arrogant and aristocratic in your attitude and think your way is right all of the time. If you're married, husband ought to love their wife. Wife ought to respect their husband. No, y'all ain't the same. That's why God put y'all together. Here it is, to cover one another. Paul said, you got to cover each other. He said, I see the love. I got to stop, but I see the lesson. If any man is overtaken in a fault, he uses a strange word. He says, if. If is a conjunction word that means possibility. <laughs> In other words, Paul said to the Galatians, I understand how rough your world is. Paul said, matter of fact, it's so much sin all around 
that more than likely before the day is over, you're going to fall into sin. <laughs> so Paul said, if you're overtaken in a fault. In other words, he said, it's just a matter of time. He said, but, but what you do is when you fall in your faults, you ought to ask God for forgiveness and God will send somebody along the way to help pull you through. Do I have a witness? Yeah. In, in other words, God said through Paul, he said, that's why we have to love one another. <laughs> Because all of us have the propensity to fall into sin. <laughs> Watch the text one more time. He said, brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault. Now notice he didn't specify what fault, which means all of us got a fault with our name on it. <laughs> Y'all ought to help me here. Hey, yeah, you know, that, that's the reason you can't talk about folks that may be gay. <laughs> you may pray for them, but don't talk to put them down. <laughs> because y'all can't handle this. But the truth is, they may be gay, but you drink all the time. <laughs> and if you don't drink, somebody smoke on the side. <laughs> and if smoking ain't your fault, your nasty attitude show no fear. How many of you know all of us got a fault that we're dealing with. <laughs> Do I have a witness? The lesson is you got to learn how to cover one another. <laughs> when you see a brother and a sister struggling, don't expose their struggle, <laughs> but try to empower and encourage them to stand strong. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> I thank God for cover me. <laughs> it's because Paul said, I'm not perfect. <laughs> but I got to leave y'all here and tell somebody it's because I need your help. Do I have a witness here? <laughs> Paul said, uh, I need uh, your help. <laughs> Are y'all praying with me? Uh, watch the text uh, just one more time. <laughs> Paul said, uh, Brother in, uh, if any man <laughs> be overtaken uh, in a fault, <laughs> you uh, that are spiritual <laughs> here's what you do <laughs> restore the, such a one <laughs> in the spirit uh, of meekness <laughs> do I have a witness here uh, in other words <laughs> Paul said uh, to cover each other <laughs> it's three things uh, we have to do do I have a witness here? Uh, number one, he said, uh, be spiritual. Number two, uh, he said, be strategic. Number three, uh, he said, be sincere. Do I have a witness here? Uh, I'm going to try it one more time. <laughs> Feel pretty good right here. <laughs> he said, uh, number one, <laughs> Be spiritual. Are y'all praying with me? Uh, because the text said, uh, ye uh, that are spiritual. In other words, uh, Paul said, uh, you got to be careful uh, of what you say uh, about other folks. <laughs> because God uh, is watching you. <laughs> Do we have a witness here? <laughs> the reason why <laughs> we ought to cover uh, one another <laughs> is because God 
is watching us. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? <laughs> Don't go <laughs> and try to expose uh, somebody else. <laughs> and I tell you why <laughs> you're throwing rocks <laughs> while living uh, in a glass house. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? <laughs> but the text said, <laughs> we are <laughs> the spiritual. Uh, you ought to help somebody. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? <laughs> but then he said, <laughs> you got to be strategic. <laughs> Do I have a witness here? <laughs> Paul said, <laughs> restore uh, such a one. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> you got to strategize <laughs> to help somebody else. <laughs> Are y'all listening to me? Uh, you got to remember um, uh, what the Lord has done in your life. <laughs> you ought to help somebody. <laughs>